Nobody in India had an airline even prior to independence, right? And you had uh, airlines in the Deccan, uh, you had Air India that was operating uh, five to seven years even prior to independence, uh, operated on uh, multiple trunk routes as well as domestic routes. So it would be fair to say that aviation has been part of our DNA for a very, very long time. We had uh, seaplanes in India um, in the 1910s, 1920s. Uh, we had a seaplane um, landing in a man-made lake in Gwalior. Uh, way back in 1910-1920. So civil aviation has been very part, very much part of our DNA for a very, very long time. But the question very aptly asked today is uh, from Amrit Kal to Shatabdi Kal, the journey of India uh, in the area of civil aviation. So let me uh, delve a little bit in the recent past before we talk about our present and before our future. Uh, in 2013-14, um, we had uh, 74 airports in our country. Today, in a span of eight years, we have built out an additional 67 airports, uh, water uh, ports, and uh, heliports. So we've gone from a number of 74 to 141. We have almost doubled our number of, of airports, uh, water ports, and, and heliports uh, in India. Uh, if you look at fleet size, uh, in 2013-14, we had uh, roughly about 400 aircraft in India. Today, we are inching close to the 700 number. I believe we are somewhere between 692 to 694. Uh, we're going to add capacity at the rate of close to 15% per annum, uh, which means uh, you're soon going to see a fleet in India close to 1,200 to 1,500 planes. Uh, capacity expansion as far as airports are concerned, in the next five years, we are looking at a CapEx plan of close to uh, 97,000 crores, uh, purely on airports. Uh, that covers the state-owned uh, uh, Airports Authority of India, uh, which has a very aggressive brownfield as well as greenfield program. Uh, close to about 42 airports uh, on the brownfield side are being upgraded, new terminals, uh, capex of almost close to about 30,000 crores odd. Uh, we are building out three new greenfield projects, um, uh, Holongi, uh, Dholohera, uh, Hisa, uh, Hirasar, uh, another 3,500 crores. And equivalently on the private sector side, uh, Brownfield, again, expanding seven new, uh, seven uh, current airports, uh, close to about 34,000 crores and building out an additional four new greenfield projects, close to about 31,000 crores. So that is the thrust. Now, why is that happening is going to be Siddharth's next question. And the reason why that's happening is really simple. You have a country of uh, 1.3 billion people. Uh, but pre-pandemic, uh, we had only 144 million flyers in India. If you look at the railways, which is, I believe, our closest competitor, uh, only in the region, and I'm, I'm uh, taking a segment of the railways. I'm not taking the whole transportation system of the railways because I'm looking at an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. If you look at the only the air-conditioned part of railways, so only first AC and only second AC. So first AC and second AC, pre-pandemic, we had uh, close to about 185 million travelers. Mm -hmm. So the, the delta between civil aviation and railways is roughly about 40 million travelers per year. However... The important point here is if you look at the CAGR, the compounded annual growth rate, the uh, CAGR for railways is close to about 5.6%, whereas the CAGR for civil aviation is close to 10.3%. So therefore, it's my prediction that in the years to come, uh, it may take us uh, uh, another five years, seven years, but in the years to come, you're actually going to look at the number of travelers in civil aviation becoming pretty much the bulwark of air-conditioned travel in India as a means of transportation. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we had, as I mentioned, 144 million uh, domestic travelers and 60 million international travelers. What's my forecast? My forecast is in the next five to seven years, that number of 200 million is going to grow to 400 million travelers. Uh, that's the kind of delta and growth that you're going to see in the civil aviation business.
And what I mean by last mile connectivity, and I'm going to take you back to the first comment that you made while we started this interaction, is that yes, look at I to D, look at metro to metro, but also look at metro to two, two, two tier and three tier, and finally look at two, three, two tier to three tier to last mile connectivity. And therefore the thrust has to also be on regional connectivity, which is why in the last year, You've seen that under Uran, we have brought in a new scheme, which is the small aircraft scheme. India has to also look at the last mile connectivity in terms of sub-20-seater aircraft. 